rhubarb crumble tart. I'll start with a cup and a half of all-purpose flour. And this time, I'm going to make the mixture using a stand mixer. But just like the cobbler, you don't have to bother sifting your flour in this recipe. Half a cup of sugar. And in addition to the half a cup of sugar, I add just a little bit, a tablespoon of light brown sugar. This crumble base, which is essentially like a cookie, has an almond cookie flavor to it. So I add a quarter cup of ground almonds, then just a quarter teaspoon of baking powder. Unlike the cobbler that I really needed to puff up, this is just to give it a bit of body. And the same measure, a quarter teaspoon of salt. I'll give this a quick blend just to combine the ingredients. There we go, and I have 10 tablespoons of unsalted butter. Just like the cobbler, it's cool, not ice cold. Now I'll add the butter a piece at a time and mix it until it's an even crumbly texture. There we go. So now my butter is worked in. I've got my pans ready. A nine inch fluted tart pan, and then just a regular baking tray with parchment paper on it. Now what I'm going to do is first scoop out a cup of the crumble mixture, and I'm going to bake it separately. This is the crumble that's going to go on top of the fruit tart. And this is a great trick I picked up as a pastry chef, to have a crumble or a streusel type dough on hand. If you bake it first, once it goes onto your fruit, it'll ensure it stays nice and crispy. Now the rest of the crumble goes into the pan, and the pan's ungreased. And because it is such a crumbly mixture, you want to make sure you press it firmly into the pan. So to do so, I like to go up the sides first. That way I ensure I have enough. And you can see how it starts to look like a shortbread cookie once you really press it in. And the rest, you just press into the bottom. There we go. So I have my crust for my tart and the crumble topping. This is ready to go in a 350 oven, and it takes about 20, 25 minutes. It'll just turn a light, even golden brown. There we go. While that bakes, I have one that's already baked and cooled, because it's important when you're filling your tart that it is cooled so that the fruit and the custard I'm putting within it doesn't seep through. So here we have that beautiful golden brown. And now I've got this instant crumble that's ready to use whenever I need it. I'll set that aside. And it's time to make the fruit and custard filling for the tart. I've got two cups of diced fresh rhubarb here. I've also made this tart with just fresh raspberries. Oh, delicious. So I simply spread that on the bottom of the crust, and I'm essentially making a custard that I'll pour over top, and then it gets baked all together. A third of a cup of whipping cream starts it off, and a quarter cup of sugar. I'll add two tablespoons of flour. Now this helps thicken the custard as it bakes, and as it cooks around the rhubarb, so it stays distinct from the rhubarb. And just to tie in that almond flavor that's also in the crumble, two tablespoons of ground almonds. There we go, I need my eggs. And this takes a whole egg, as well as a single egg yolk. And I'll just add a little vanilla extract, a teaspoon and whisk this together. Okay, now this is ready to be poured over the fruit. I try and give it a nice even coating. But don't be concerned if you see that there's less custard. If the custard seeps around the fruit and it doesn't fully fill the tart, once those juices cook out of the rhubarb and meld with the custard, it all fills in and finds its place. All right. And now the reserved crumble, I can just sprinkle right on top. Now you see what I mean. This is a little dressier than your Tuesday night apple crisp. This is definitely something fit for an elegant dinner party. 
Now I'll pop this in the oven, again at 350, and it takes about 25 to 30 minutes. And to check the doneness of the tart, give the tray a little jiggle. If the tart actually jiggles in the center, then that's actually when you wanna pull it out of the oven because it will continue setting right through the center. Cool it to room temperature, and then you wanna serve it chilled. And I've got something special in mind to serve with it. Again, keeping it elegant. A creme anglaise sauce is a custard sauce that pairs beautifully with fruit desserts. And a sauce like that would go with any of the desserts I've made today, but it fits particularly well with this beautiful rhubarb crumble tart. Here it is, chilled and ready to serve. Now first I'll measure my 10% cream, so half and half cream. That way it's not too thick or rich, just the right balance. And you wanna heat this up on medium heat. And while the cream is heating, that's a perfect opportunity to infuse flavor. Now, vanilla bean just works perfectly. I'm gonna use half a bean for that measure of the cream. Split it lengthwise. If you don't have access to a vanilla bean, you can, of course, use vanilla extract or even vanilla bean paste. With the back of my paring knife, I scrape out the seeds. And there's as much flavor in the pod as there are in the seeds itself. So I drop this right in and the seeds, but why stop there? To give your creme anglaise a little standout character, you can add any number of flavors. Now that could be something as simple as lemon zest or orange zest, but you know what? You can even reach into the world of savory cooking. An herb like bay leaf or bay laurel just adds a beautiful aromatic level to the creme anglaise. To thicken my cup and a half of 10% cream, I've got three egg yolks. And to that, I'll add a quarter cup of sugar. Before I add my sugar to my egg yolks, I'm actually gonna check my cream first to see how warm it is. A little tip, you don't wanna add your sugar to your egg yolks until right before you're ready to add the cream because the actual egg yolk will crystallize with the sugar and you'll end up with little bits in your custard sauce, not what you're after. Here we go, the cream's just hitting a simmer so I can add my sugar now. Give it a little whisk. And then the trick is to gradually introduce the hot cream to the cool egg yolks. So just a little at a time to warm those egg yolks up gently. That way you're not curdling or scrambling them. And then once you've got a little warmth in there, then you can really dump it all in. Bay leaves, vanilla bean pod, everything. Now this goes back into the pot. And I'll switch to a wooden spoon and cook this still on medium heat. You wanna keep it moving, that way the egg doesn't cook at the bottom of the pot. What I'm looking for in terms of thickness is when it coats the back of the spoon. It's an easy way to check. That way you know your eggs are fully cooked. Mm, you can really pick up on that perfume from the bay laurel. And now I can draw a clean line on the back of my spoon so I can strain out that bay leaf and the vanilla bean. And to ensure I have a nice smooth sauce, just to keep it smooth, I put plastic wrap right on the surface. It's more so to prevent condensation from building up and then dripping back into the sauce once you cover it. So I'll set this aside first to cool at room temperature and then I'll chill it and I have one already made. There we go. And you can see it even continues to thicken once it chills. There go, I'll loosen my slice. And I like to pull a bit of the sauce just off to the side, as opposed to hiding it by drizzling it over top of the tart. Oh, and look, you can see that crumble layer, a bit of the custard peeking through, that tart springtime rhubarb. And we've got that crumble, that cookie layer just waiting underneath. 